start. All right. Okay. So. So I dropped the ball on this one, guys, and I forgot to make a presentation. But luckily, you can't see that. There's this awesome package that will let you make <laughs> for our packages. So I cloned it off GitHub and I'm going to open it and I'll try and make a presentation real quick that I can show you guys. So if I do. That. Then. I should be able to just open this in my web browser and now I have a presentation. I am actually going to switch to Safari real quick because Firefox has some weird rendering issue that makes the text disappear. So, but this is package slides. It's a, sorry, I'm going to move some of the zoom things out of the way. It automatically generates presentations for source code. So you point it at an R package project, it will generate and render a Corto reveal JS presentation for that package. It has a title slide like this, a description slide like this, generated from the package's description file. And each exported function has slides with its description, returns, parameters, examples, and source code. And so we can dive in a little bit. So the main, really the only function that you use is build presentation, which does what it sounds like. It's the powerhouse, it's the only thing you interact with. And so this is, I think, a direct copy of my description. Um, and you just pass it like a working directory or whatever, and it makes this cute little presentation. And it returns, like I said, it creates and renders a Corto Markdown presentation, but it doesn't return an R object. Um, I guess technically it has to, but you don't use it. Um, and it takes a few parameters. So it takes an R package, which is a file path to the root directory of the source folder, the name of an R package from CRAN, or an R package from GitHub in the username repository format. Um, for now, I mean, I'll, I'll go through and then I'll get into some of the issues of which there are many. Um, you can give it a file name for your Quarto Markdown file. It can be a path so long as it ends with file, as long as it ends with .qmd. And then there's a YAML argument, which is a path to underscore package slides .yaml, or a function called to create YAML, which is the other function that users interact with. And so this code is the build presentation and it's not the fanciest rendering of it. It's actually just a direct render. But um, like I said, we've got these three arguments. And then I tried to name my packet or my functions based off of what they do. Um, and so we find the package first, we find the output file, we parse the YAML, John, Zoom just told me participants can now see my screen. I'm assuming you all right. see it before. Yeah, we've been able to see it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it just it popped up a little thing. Uh, okay. Then there's a little thing here that just says, hey, is this package actually installed? If it is, um, we're going to use echo. If not, we'll use eval for our chunk options. Um, and then I added this one yesterday, get credits. So that's how I have the little, my author name at the bottom. Um, this just pulls again, straight from the description file. And so it, right now it's only set to pull authors and creators, which I think is actually called maintainers now, or sorry, contributors maybe, but. Uh, I creep. Cree is maintainer. Okay, yeah. Uh, and, and yeah. I don't know why that is. It doesn't yeah, it's historical, I think. I don't, I think basically when CRAN and such first started, um, they didn't have the concept of like giving the package to someone else to maintain. And yeah. so 
they used the Cree tag to mean person who maintains the package. Mm -hmm. And it's probably built into too many things for them to easily change it. Because that system is a generic, like it's a system from outside of R. Yeah. And I'm sure it has maintainer because it has like gardener. So um, oh. it has like every role that you could have on a project. Okay. <laughs> um, but then it's split roughly into different sections of content. And so we have title contents where we get the title and then we collate it. Um, and so get title will go, I'll go into it later, but the gets essentially just go pluck all the information and then collate is what assembles it. Um, same with the description where we're getting and collating. Contents is a little bit more complicated, but again, getting, getting, um, there's a little bit more with, these are vertical slides. And so we need to construct the verticals rather than going horizontally and why some of these are vertical and horizontal. Uh, I'll go over in it, go over it in a little bit. Um, and then data contents, I'm working on getting data sets viewable, but for now, there's just a description of what the data set is and all of the different columns, again, pulled from documentation in the package itself. Um, and then file contents are the title, the package, function contents, and data contents. And then just a little bit of writing it all out and then rendering. Um, and so find file, well, I mean, it's the path that we write the Corto to, and it just takes the package, the path to package source and a file path. And it's a relatively simple function. Um, you may notice that these aren't particularly well sized. And that's because Corto doesn't have a great way to detect how large the content is and then like scale to fit. There's an option for normal sized or small sized. And you only get one or the other. There's no like built in scale or anything. And so without getting super manual and making HTML rescale it, this is what we've got. I, uh, I don't, I think uh, I wouldn't worry about that because um well see what i just uh shared in the chat oh but... I, I i saw <laughs> um your files should fit and if not then they'll scroll and that's how it is yeah so like again it's stuff like this where that little bit of the e gets <laughs> cut off that part okay yeah and like i don't really actually let me see this just might be a safari problem zoom out yeah, I don't know, but find file. Yeah, that part actually seems weird because those should wrap and fit. Yeah, I, would think. I it's an artifact of making the slides scrollable for oh. long content. Okay, I, if I remember correctly, that's what it was. But um, find file does what it sounds like. It just goes. Does this file exist? or not, and then it returns a file path. Um, find package is not the best thing ever. I definitely have some GitHub issues that you're welcome to contribute to, <laughs> but it takes a package name or file path. And um, yeah, five lines at a time, John. <laughs> <laughs> so if the package passed is the working directory or the, this is a directory that exists. We'll pull the package out and then return a name and a path for it. Otherwise, it's kind of a bad way where I just go read. Even if you have it installed, I can't pull it out of the installed version yet. I have to just go re-download it from CRAN or GitHub and then parse the download so I'm essentially cloning it off of CRAN or GitHub and then parsing there. Um, and it's not the greatest thing ever. 
which again, it's one of the sticking points, but it works okay enough for now. And thankfully our packages aren't too large. And if you're making a presentation for it, you probably have it. Yeah, you probably like, have it already. And then you can just open the project and run it locally, in which case yeah. it won't go download. Um, and so then if I want to go over to yaml.r, then we have the create YAML function, which return, it will create the file and write to it, then return the file path. As of about an hour and a half ago, this isn't quite true, um, but it takes a file path. It shouldn't end in a slash. Again, not quite true anymore. Um, and as a format theme, format functions, format data sets, choose functions and choose data sets argument, which is an awkward, mix of character vectors and lists, but the reason why will become apparent soon. Um, and all told, this isn't the most complicated bit ever. Uh, this is the part I added where now instead of, if you supply it a path, if path is a package slides.yml path, then it won't overwrite it with a new .yml, a new YAML file which it was doing before. Um, and then a little bit of, <clears throat> sorry, a little bit of um, subsetting here for the different options that are available. And it turns out YAML files are really just nested lists. Mm -hmm. And so I've got some helper functions with uh, dot append to YAML. And this one is actually in my other function. So that might need to get moved. Um, but then we just print it, write it out to the file. And then we've got parse YAML again, file is the file path. If the file exists, read the YAML and check it. Otherwise, um, check YAML an empty list. And this works for reasons yet to be seen. <laughs> But here's check YAML. So again, takes an argument. It's a list representing a YAML file. Um, yep. So if the functions are null, here's essentially where I'm creating all of these default arguments so that the user doesn't have to supply every option. If they're OK with the default, then don't worry about it. Don't mention it. I'll take care of it. Um, so if the functions are null, or um, data sets or the theme, then I've got auto, all, and default. And then YAML, we're using set as true for functions. And set as true, again, does a little bit of checking for me. And it will set all of these options as true. And same for data sets with format source and references, then it returns the YAML list. And set as true where non-included options are set to true. Cool, it takes the YAML, it wants to know if it's functions or data sets, and uh, a vector of the options exposed to users in the YAML format. And it just, you go requested, which ones are not specified. Um, I guess I can format this pipe a little bit better, but sequence along, set things, return true, for the ones that are not specified, assign the names and append it to the list and return the YAML file. And this one does go on a little bit longer, but we'll process the chosen functions. And it's again, a list and choose is the list passed to choose functions and create YAML. Um, and this gets more complicated and I do not remember what it does. So I'm gonna breeze through it, but if, Let's see. Yeah, honestly, not a clue on what this one does. I looked at it <laughs> earlier today and I was like, I don't know, I'll figure it out later. But this is, so this is the core really of like what is exposed to the user. And then if we wanted to dive in to how create YAML actually works before diving into more of the code, um, we can. I think, you know, uh, yeah, let's pause for a minute.
So the what it the general idea is that it will it goes through all your source code, your um yep. like your, yeah, your source code, and then it makes a set, you know, like a vertical slide per function or per file. So that's decided and it's covered a little bit in here. Um where if we go to all options, then any exported function and any child function or any other functions in the same file as an exported function are included in the auto. When you set functions to auto, that's all included. And then the verticals are per file. Okay. But if you wanted to move an internal function outside, you would just have to specify that manually in your YAML file. Okay. Very cool. And then this is just the Corto file that it creates. It's not pretty. I did my best with formatting, but it is <laughs> functional. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect because, I, I mean, I like that you could use it like, oh, crap, uh, I've got to talk, you know, like your um, your introduction. My um, yeah. yeah, that you could basically do that. And, um, you know, not exactly that, but that's effectively <laughs> what I plan to do next month for mine. So, uh, like, I, I hope to work on it a little bit beyond what you auto-generate, but... Uh, I kind of hope to not have to work on it that much. I'll work on the package and the format and all that. And then hopefully it'll just make a thing and it'll be cool. Yeah. So I think and that's really neat for yeah. the, for the kind of talk where you want to do like a deep dive into how does this package work? So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's aimed sort of at, Hey, I made this cool thing and I want to show it off or maybe more on the educational side, like if you wanted to go over dply yeah. R in a slideshow format, <laughs> got books, oh. whatever, but now you just pass it dply R and it will make a slideshow about all of the functions for you. Yeah, that's, However, that's interesting. However, I do have a disclaimer that I've tested it on some posit packages and posit packages do not play nice because they are very particular in the way that their documentation is written. And it will be a lot more work to get to a point where I can digest what they've made. Like Fair. right now I can't anything with in an anything with an inherits tag, I cannot process. So have you have you looked into reading the documentation from Man oh, I've instead reading the source code for how because package down is essentially doing a very similar thing. And right. the problem is their code is so high level that it's essentially security through obscurity. <laughs> well, make sure there are issues around that and I might I, take a I look. <laughs> um, here so we can I'll, I'll go through the issues in a bit, but um, just a quick aside on, unless there's more comments on the presentation so far. Okay, so um, this create YAML function was, I got tired of making things by hand and I was like, how do we do this? <laughs> and so this YAML file, um, I have an example for Palmer penguins, which breaks Sometimes it breaks some of the things because their some of their oxygen tags don't quite they're not formatted quite properly hmm. according to rock how oxygen reads them in. So I, if I remember correctly, you're only supposed to have one source tag, and then you list out multiple sources under that one tag. But they have multiple source tags, and so they get digested weirdly because get tag only expects one thing for each name. You're only supposed to have like one return. You're supposed to have one description. You can have multiple parameters, but it's expecting it. And so when you have multiple of something it doesn't expect, it breaks. 
but it will still generate a a presentation for it. It just yells at you a lot. Uh, <laughs> but here we can see our function options for each of those different sections. So if you just wanted like a high level overview of what is um, Beekeeper, then you could have just the descriptions and the returns, maybe, if that's what you wanted. Or if you wanted to dive in and say, hey, I want help on this, you could do all of it. Or if you made data sets and you wanted to present your data sets, then you could do that too. Um, and so just, again, format source references and then an argument for including functions or data sets. And then this is the same thing, but in YAML. And it starts to become a little apparent why some things are vectors and some are lists, where format theme, you can really only have one theme. And so a length one vector works here, whereas format functions, we've got a bunch of different arguments for it. And then choose functions could either be a single argument or if we get in a little bit deeper, we could say for yaml.r, we want to auto fill function. So that's where it takes, it says, is there an exported function here? And if yes, it will include that and all of the internals. Or for build title, if we just want the internals, we can do this. Or okay. build presentation.r will just default to auto. And so you're it's a little bit more flexibility in what you want to include. It's so like here I said, this will only include the functions and slides. So it'll only just be these. Whereas build presentation to R, sorry, I guess this will include all of them. It's been a long time. <laughs> and then I, I do have documentation right now for all of the different options. Um, you do have to have it installed to evaluate. And even though it's installed again, I'm gonna re-download it anyways, because I can't quite touch your installed packages. Um, I'm not able to do testing just yet, and I can't view data sets. Um, I started looking into this one a little bit this morning. Ooh. Like Palmer Penguins, the data sets are included as a .r file that you would need to source, whereas NYC Flights includes an RDA file for each data set. Gotcha. And I would imagine some other ones might include an RDS. And it's I would, or I'd look at what our universe is doing. Um, basically, you you uh with you can use Weber, uh, WebR to, mm -hmm. um, actually load it from the package, and then display the data set as a data set, like you know, just like in a, a normal presentation when you're showing data, mm -hmm. um, which uh, actually I guess you could do it even with Web WebR probably, but. That lets you do some fancy stuff and they have a blog post all about it so that might be mm -hmm. something that you could extend into um anyway so very I, cool i think like this might be a little wrong i think it does default to auto <laughs> um but we got auto exported all or none and then again pretty much everything else all of the themes, you just give it one of the reveal JS themes that's available and it will it'll do that. Um, but if we dig in, I've got some issues that I can show off. And then depending on time, um, <laughs> I I can re-render it with so if I were to just go open. And I just change this to all. And then I go back here and I can do YAML equals and the square package slides YML. Then if I were to refresh this, oh wait, this is Firefox. This is the rendering issue in Firefox, by the way, where it's white text on a white background and then code and headers get displayed properly. But like even the headers are in orange for some reason. And it does it right sometimes. <laughs> and it does it wrong most of the times. That's 
uh, interesting. I guess it'd be one way to put that. <laughs> yeah. So now, uh, now that I've changed nope. it, you can see all of my different source files have now been set to auto. Or sorry, these are all set to all. All right. Yeah. But I'll leave that alone first for a minute and we can switch over. I've got issues. Like I said, allowing issues to target installed packages. Um, I've got a few things left on here, which is including any tests. Again, that's a lot more of a deep dive into the package type thing. So that's why I haven't been too worried about it yet. And a data sets view option would be nice. Um, I haven't added my imports or independencies yet because I'm not pushing it to CRAN anytime soon. <laughs> They're going to change a lot, um, but I do. I don't really need imports because I'm very specific about always doing the package colon colon function. You still need it in the description. I, so... I will need it in the description, but I don't need oh. it in the function. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, although that's a whole other thing that I'm looking into adding to my style because then. If you import it, you can refer to it without the colon, which is what I've never done in the past. But then if they break your package, mm -hmm. you can replace it without having to replace it everywhere in the code just by writing your own version of that function. So I think I'm going to start always importing. Alternatively, <laughs> find in files? Yeah, uh, but it's a lot, it's easy to, Screw that Thank up. <laughs> um, but anyway, we've auto fit contents to slide mm -hmm. content to slides. This is mm -hmm. yeah. I my solution works mildly, but again, it makes ugly slides where we can see some of them have like very large text here. <laughs> Some of them have very large text, and then others have very small mm. text. And it's kind of uh, a crapshoot on which one you're going to get. Um, I do have some of them labeled with help. Um, this parse one, I don't remember. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't quite work as I'm hoping. Um, but again, if I can switch to something else to read in all of the code, then I don't have to worry about it as much. Um, and I don't remember what my solution is for dealing with this at the moment. Handling non-existent blocks. If I query for a block that doesn't exist, what should I do? Right now, I'm just checking to see what the return value is. If the length is not one, it doesn't exist. Um, inherit blocks are not respected. I do have some code sketched out for this, um, but nothing that works quite yet. Um, and part of that is just because the inheritance is recursive. So you could inherit from function A could inherit from function B, which then in turn inherits from function C. Yep. And it gets so, Why and, don't you use the rendered docs instead of the rendered, um, let me see. The Roxygen see. 2 code? The rendered. Because then Roxygen 2 just has already done it. Because I don't remember being able to find a way that I could access the rendered versions. I can, it's something I can look into again, but when I started this, it was a not even caffeine fueled, like three hour <laughs> yes. thing to get a basic presentation going. So there's definitely need for potential need for large rewrites. Okay. Um, and that is, it's something that's been on my radar. I'm just not really sure how best to do it. And I looked into I think it was how package down was reading files or something. And they literally just 
are consuming it character by character and then handling it that way. They're, they have their own little parser function that does it character at a time. But they're they're still parsing the the parsed documents. Like you have to document, you have to run document in our studio, which takes the Roxygen comment tags and turns them into the man pages. Yes. And then and then package down loads the man pages, not the does it? I'm pretty sure. So I think if you don't render your documentation, it doesn't show up. I mean, I, I mean it's all on GitHub. So let's see what can yeah. I do. Docs. Not so not docs. Oh wait, yeah, that's my book. There we go. Man. Delete that little bad boy. And then package down build site. It's not recreating man. And uh, so that it. should be in docs now, right? Or yep. Yeah. This was all edited this minute. OK, so view it. It's If you go to reference, uh, so yeah, specifically reference, oh. it's empty. Yeah. Interesting. That's <laughs> so now I'm gonna not do that, and I will do this instead. <laughs> um, okay, huh. I so will, I think that will make a lot of your job easier, yeah. Um, because then you're just using that rendered man. And so all the imports is done, all the like cross references and you know anything that's fancy is already taken care of. And then you just use it. Um, I mean, there's you know that just it's using a lot of work because hmm. it might be harder to separate the pieces. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, once they're in the rendered man page. Um, but it should still be pretty straightforward, I think. To do. Where would it be? No, no. Is there one called functions? One what? Sorry, I'm not. I have to get to the right one screen. of the package down functions. One of the built ins. Oh, that's interesting. Um, perhaps. Oh, anyway. Yeah, it's. I'll I'll go through it. But then the last, <laughs> the last sort of nice one to Sean your comment about five lines at the time. I have this <laughs> sketched out. It would require package owners to add new code, or to I, add new lines to their source code. But I don't think. I don't think it's your job. I think I'm saying that you'll get prettier presentations if your source code is written per the recommendations in books like Five Lines of Code or yeah. Clean Code, where each function should be small. Fair enough. Um, so I don't think it's I don't think you have to worry about it. I mean, whatever. I don't think I, I don't think you should do the work. Um, I think that if people like, I think it's a good push that, oh man, my presentations would be so much nicer if my functions were smaller. Yeah. And it'd be easier to read and maintain too. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it's something I can keep in mind because sometimes your functions can't stay as short as you would like, no matter how hard you might try. Like, I mean, at least on this one, it in theory could be smaller, but there's not there's not a lot going on. It's just a lot of repeated type right. code. Um, and there's not, I guess maybe if I used an L apply to get tag with this vector, I could shorten it to two lines. And then I would have a list and then here 
it would this would already be a list and like yep i mean honestly not a bad idea <laughs> following it but yep I, not even it doesn't have to be all applied just a function that is get data set details or whatever that you just literally copy paste all that code into and then you just call that function to create yeah. that data set details object instead of right. doing it by hand Sometimes I'd rather have a slightly longer function so I don't have to make another one. <laughs> but, like, it's, it's what F2 is for. I don't know. But if we die... Anyway. Like, I, so I would say, like, I would very strongly encourage you for this particular package yeah. to really try to enforce that on yourself because it is the demo of itself and it'll look better with uh, short functions. Um, <laughs> if we do there is a seed in action which may currently be broken oh there you go um yeah but <laughs> quick side note getting this footer only on the title slide <laughs> was not the easiest thing yep because i ended up having to google and do um JavaScript to get it. <laughs> and then for a while I was using different event listeners where it would disappear. You could it would show up on the first time and then if you left the title slide and then went back it would be gone. Um, that was you could probably do it as like a subtitle instead of as a footer, you know. Well, I have well, except with multiple authors maybe. Okay, yeah, you got yeah, the so version. Right now, if I have, so like if I just, for example, were to do description, add author, we'll do John <laughs> Herman uh, role equals, I don't think it'll like this. <laughs> oh, it did not like that. Okay, we'll leave the role yeah. unspecified. And then if I do that, and then if I rebuild, the presentation. It I'm just using a it's somewhere in here. Um, it it might be my, my, fa my favorite collapse with a comma a comma space. And then we do this. Yes. Sorry, the zoom bar is covering my refresh you reload uh there you are <laughs> oh is this the website version yeah that's the website version wrong one okay no oh right you don't have the role no. yeah you, i was gonna say i think you need give you the role role equals. ctb yeah I'll, I'll i'm gonna wipe it off anyways yeah oh, yeah so okay there you go and now it just shows up in a little. Okay. I had to pull out the email address and ORCID links yep. because otherwise it looked kind of gross. Yeah. And I had this weird problem where the first time you were on the title slide, the like an email would show up as a link, which was great. But then if you navigated away and then navigated back, it would just turn into plain text because it was formatting properly for the footer which is YAML, but not for the JavaScript because I just dump it in like yeah. this. And I, I would try and pull it out and format it and then mm -hmm. put it back. I just took it out. I think th the fight is telling you maybe don't obsess on it being at that point. <laughs> like <laughs> I would make it a subheading layer or level of some sort and then it just formats and it just fits and it's not the thing is that it only really gives you a title and a subtitle and i left oh i see what you're saying yeah this this is my title this is my subtitle right this and isn't just a, a normal slide got it yeah this is the title slide specifically which gives you a lot less flexibility and a lot more I mean, pain. You could also just put the version number in the title. I don't know. It it felt wrong. 
doing it that way. If I think I if you're it. giving a talk, like I imagine there would be a package slides 1.0.0 talk that is different from the package slides 2.0.0 talk. And so it kind of is the title at that point. Maybe. <laughs> or, you know, like Tidyverse 1.0 versus Tidyverse 2.0. You're going to be giving a talk about what has changed. And so. Part of it too. Uh, it yeah. says do not edit by hand. But <laughs> you just delete it. <laughs> and you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah. It's like, that's part of it too. That's really nice is it just makes the skeleton and you can use it as is right. if you want to. Or you can go change something. So if we did want to right. pop your footer out, we also go have it and then just re-render. So this is, yeah, it's like here. But this, see, it's just really big. And so my thinking for this one was if you wanted to have your author name as a subtitle, then it wouldn't necessarily be all of the authors or all of the maintainers. It would just be whoever you are presenting the presentation. Yeah, but again, you're building, you know, like you should expect that people are going to edit these in most oh, situations. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I think... Uh, I did if, think about giving these Like, if you have to do a really clever solution, then chances are you're over-engineering it. <laughs> Yes, but I think part of it too is that there's just no way, like, I swear, how I don't Reveal see. JS works where the title slide is a separate entity. There's no clean way to do it. Whereas if it was any other slide, it would be a piece of cake. But because right. the title slide is made here rather than here, it ends so. up being more difficult. I'm trying to find, I have done something where, yes, I don't give it a title or a subtitle, and then it doesn't give you that slide, and then you just make slide one, your title slide. So if I were to do this, then do... I was like, I know there's a way that I dealt with this. I once... I have a presentation somewhere. Yeah, let's see, this isn't a title slide. It's a first slide, but it's specifically not a title slide. It, but you can format it and you can give it a class and you can do all the things. So I can't, you know, I don't know off the top of my head, but I'll bet it's like, no, 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 no. That. <laughs> I mean, yes, you could do that, but. Well, for now, that's. Yes. Is coming to mind. Yeah, I'd have to do my, I'd have to do my vertical. So the thing is, I end up fiddling around with it no matter what, because I'm either trying to now replicate my. Oh, see here, look, watch the, see my, my footnote is here, I navigate away, and now it's gone, <laughs> because this specifically doesn't it doesn't match the like format. Yep. And that's like when people come in and edit these slides, that JavaScript becomes invalid. And so, I mean, it, depending on what they do, it can yeah. easily depend. It's very fragile. I, I just, I would avoid that if you can. Yeah. There's, I don't know. I'll see if I can replace the title slide. I know I have one floating around. Yeah. So go to one, go to one that is saved that, or that's, you know, normal that has a title slide, if you can. Because uh, anyway, I would deal with it later, but I'll, I I would almost guarantee you that you can just give it a style and yeah. then, or give it a class rather, and it'll be the title slide. Prob probably. Um, but like like if, if I, you go to that, yeah. If we make Palmer penguins, you can see there's some nice big error messages. And yeah. I, I tried to be nice here, and say, hey, I know the reason why this is happening, kind of, but it's nothing I can really do about it. 
So. But if you're using the rendered man pages, that won't be a thing anymore. So hopefully, <laughs> I think. Or so the issue is that these source lists are all separate tags. Yep. Uh, yeah. Or is it in here? Yeah, right there. Yeah. Lines 18 through and 21. They, Posit apparently has found a way to make this work that is not exposed for some reason in. I mean, I guarantee they're just, you know, Rock. Control Shift D documenting to make it. So. You no, know, but the way Posit <laughs> is. is grabbing it and rendering it because if I run get tag source, I get an error. Well, I guess I only get the first one. Whereas if posit does it, then they get all four of them. And so they're doing I don't, that I haven't figured out yet. Yeah. I don't think that they're that anywhere in the actual rendering process, they do get tag source. I think they just do anyway, whatever. Um, so that's a separate thing. I have, all three uh, show up and then we can do like this is just the default so it's pulling in um, some extra stuff we might not need and then I am running examples on it which they have and so this is helpful because it's giving me their preview in the example but I don't necessarily know that penguins underscore raw dot csv exists for every package with data um, and then i mean if the example when you run the example it has to work that's part of a package being on cran so yes either but it there's no guarantee that data is included in the example there's no guarantee that a preview yeah. is included and then alternatively, there's no particular reason that the data exists plainly in any form. It could just be an R file that you have to run. And so I think Palmer Penguins is set up with an on attach that does run this file to create the data sets. Uh, something. I, have I mean, they're probably in. Where was it? Or... Oh, wrong one. Also wrong one. Where did it go? Oh, it's in data. There we go. So we have these delayed assigns. Oh, yeah. And then in data raw, we have the actual code that gets it. Yeah. I mean, that's just where they're creating the data sets for the package, but the package isn't expected to have like the rendered data raw is what's in the package. Yeah. So that, well, when I cloned it, this is what I have. And so that's the problem is I can't access right now your installed packages. The so I don't, I don't have access at the moment to the rendered data and it's rendered when it's installed, but not when you just clone it off of CRAN or GitHub. Gotcha. Write some issues. All yeah. of these are definitely solvable. <laughs> they are solvable, but yeah. And without, I don't, uh, solvable via, uh, like dev tools, or, well, technically package load. Um, so this one I noticed this morning. There's some formatting in 
the Roxygen tags that I'm picking up as raw strings and not as formatted. Right. Um, but here's why, essentially why I need scrollable slides too, where I can show you the format and I try and describe it as best I can. Um, I guess this is just pulled straight from the documentation again, but it's there. And then here's where that single source is causing problems. Yeah. Um, and it's the same for both. I mean, both of these files are very similar. And so that's where I'm losing. So, yeah, I guess I would take it an extra step of I wouldn't just I wouldn't use man. I would use package down to create the HTML that you then parse, but you know, separate out to use on your slides. But I don't like necessarily I would, want to parse HTML. But that's what you want. Well, I guess, well, I mean, your other alternative is to parse something into Markdown. Yep. Yeah, I think ideally I would grab the... Yeah, I guess you want it to be... Rendered man pages, I think, would be the simplest to get. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure that you can get that. But I don't remember. But package down probably to get it. We'll do. We'll do a triple. Um, I mean, if you're down, you know, it's a five. Did oh, that, did that? I mean, yeah, no. Well, so. sorry, I was in a different window, but that's going to be in the repo. You don't need to do the document step. That's a thing that the package maintainer has to do. Yes. So. Well, I don't have to run document, but I don't, when I was looking into it initially, I don't remember finding a way to grab from here specifically, which it's being I'm, done somewhere. I just could not find where in a way that worked for me. Gotcha. So like description, parsing the description, there's the desk package package right which gives me access to it which i'm very thankful for otherwise <laughs> like to parse this all on my oh look you got added multiple times <laughs> but trying to parse all of this on my own would be sad for me but, yeah. yeah there's there's issues um, I forget what this one was about. This was happening at one point. I remember being very sad where you would run it. You could run it again. You could reference a package on GitHub and it would work. And then if you ran it a second time, it would stop working. <laughs> and I deleted the output files and it worked, started working again. Um, but yeah, I was getting errors coming out of if statements that were never accessed and a whole bunch of other nonsense. So it it lives there now as in a reminder of my sadness. But <laughs> there's like I, I like to think my won't fixes are relatively reasonable. I don't have a whole lot of I have two. Um and then anything with a help wanted or ongoing, I would love help with as well. Really any any tags would be great, but help wanted and <laughs> ongoing, I think are the most pressing. Well, I have a request for you. Okay. Um, if you go back to your, you know, your presentation of package slides, just okay. go to one of the one of the functions. I don't remember what I want to talk through any function in particular. Any function is fine. I just want to like, oh, go to the code. One. Okay. So <laughs> this is um, probably the worst defender. But that is fine. So what I would really love, and man, this may not be, this might be really impossible, but if like dot find package 
Mm -hmm. If that function is somewhere on a slide, Link I would love slide. to be able to click it and go to that slide. Um, so yeah, except then you, well, yeah. And then you can use browser back to come back. But, well, no, you wouldn't be able to use browser back. No, you, you should be able to. You could use browser yeah. back. Because yeah. If you go somewhere. It changes the URL. Yep. Yep. The problem is it's in code. Boston has auto linking capabilities for function references. That's a totally like that's it's slightly different. different. Yeah. But the the I first thing I would solve. Here. Yeah, the first thing I would solve is like, can you do that? Can you put it into a code block in Quarto without totally breaking everything? Because if not, eh, okay. Um we can try. But yeah, that anyway, so that's my feature feature request. If you Put in the GitHub issue. I will do that. Uh, we, we can try and see in the minute or so we have left if this will <laughs> it. So if I do insert a new chunk, and then what do I have? OK, so I'm using the dot to mean don't evaluate it, but Okay, so doing it that way makes it look nice. But then the problem is I would start instead of wrapping all of my code in actual code blocks, I would have to start wrapping it in code. I don't know how to specify a language doing it this way. Yeah, I I would stick to it being code blocks and then try. There's as is, which would render mm -hmm. as things are output, but that's only if I run the code. So I suspect what you would have to do is not change the um, markdown at all and instead mm -hmm. have JavaScript that mm -hmm. is reading some manifest that is creating the links if that, you know, if it's on a page that it exists. Like doing, checking to see if any function exists and replacing it with a link shouldn't, that should be the easiest part because I'm already getting all of the functions and I'm already, yeah. I already know what they are. And so, just injecting a link isn't the hard part. Okay, then. Um, then I, the, finding a way to make it look nice in, because doesn't like, but yeah, see, they do it. In the documentation, yes, yep, yep. And in fact, yeah, they go everywhere. They go even to base. Whoops, wrong. Uh, yeah. There we go. So like, they're doing it some. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted. Uh, yeah. Doing it somehow, somewhere. They don't. It's not in their doc at all. It's in package down. Oh, it's in package down. Package down is is doing that. I'm pretty certain. Okay, but I think they have to do. Let's see if I've got it. They've right. also started reusing documentation. And like chunking it out into multiple functions if they can. Yeah. It's under usage. Okay. Where is usage? Could you select like uh, a few lines of code and then leave? Uh, yeah, they don't. 
I guarantee you they didn't do anything special to make that happen because I didn't do anything special to make it happen and I have it on my markdown or my package down sites and it'll go off to Arlang or it'll go to an internal function or whatever. So it's something. Anyway, I need to uh, I need to get going, but uh, I will be using this. <laughs> Please do. I think I'm going to try to start playing with it sooner rather than later so we can make sure things work in time for me to use it in a month. Oh. Um, because for one thing, uh, it will not work for me right now. I import a lot all the time. Like if you are, I mean, if an argument happens to only be used in one function, then okay, I'll define it in place but that is rare so um it's just beekeeper uh look at so we'll start There's here the github link for it real quick and i can just try and see that's, that's the one i've been working on lately for the last few days at least okay so i dropped an l we can just see what happens. It might work. It might oh. not. Yeah, it's not gonna. It's gonna hate what I did. Well, it didn't throw any errors, so we're off to a good oh. start. That's. Yeah. See. Wait, or... but yeah, look at the parameters though. They're all nothing. And oh, that's not you, you inherited your parameters. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that I cannot do yet how did it get any of them what do I have because you have to somewhere? define them somewhere before they get inherited somewhere else yep so wait wait go to so i i can find I, I, but go to that first go to that first slide whoops um, which left the here. one that says x yeah where are we oh whoops. Did I... oh okay okay that's a different one never mind that is one that's defined right there the object type that's not the normal X that's in every other function, which I should check because I might need to do that. Uh, yes, you have to define them somewhere, but that somewhere that you define them in does not have to be a function. It can be null. And so you can, what? for example, here, I'll show you. That's so do, cool. Do, do. So I have one place to look for all of my shared arguments. Did you, you linked, okay. That is evil. <laughs> so let's see. But just use use the parsed, use what package down uses, and then you don't yeah. have to think about it. I'll, I'll try and find it. Um, Let Roxygen do this work. Yeah. It might not hurt me to just like Mastodon at random posit people who have contributed to various packages to see if they know. Yeah. Um, who owns package down? I think it's, is it not Jenny, Brian? I would think that seems like her. Hadley, uh, uh, she is just not oops. on this list at all. It's Hadley J and yeah, yeah. Hadley maintains, huh? Nile. I mean, he's maintaining. Wonder her most it's possible that it just doesn't let's see no three weeks ago it had a, a merge because i thought maybe it just doesn't get touched that often i mean it hasn't had an update recently but um but no looking at the source it had a it had a merge three weeks ago yes it just hasn't been there's hasn't been a new release in yeah a while. And then the last, there was May before that. So it looks like someone went on a spree. Yeah, it was their spring cleaning. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. But all right, I do, you need to run and I need to Yeah, run. sorry. Yeah. And we, we would be here all day. Anyway, like I said, I will use it and have many issues and possibly some PRs. If so. you're, please submit PRs. <laughs> There's a reason that those bugs remain, those issues remain open. 
Um, but I want to try it try it out first and see. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess we just saw the first version, so I'll try. Uh, I'll try to get that first level where it actually works for the style of packages that I have, so that I can present something next month. I think easily so. it'll be easy to do. All I have to do is like solve some bugs in a package, but <laughs> I don't have to make the presentation, and that's the important part. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sounds good. Anyway. All right. Thank you. I will see you and I'll see everyone uh, on Slack and I'll go bug people there because there's me next month and then there's, I don't think there are any more signups. So we have to fix that. All right. Uh, Sounds good. All right.